developing CA breast, whether all females are of the are of the risk. No, there are certain risk factors. So the importance of knowing the risk factor is that earlier identification and prevention is more is possible only by knowing the risk factors. Okay, so the risk factors, the most common risk factor is that increased uninterrupted progesterone exposure. Okay, what are all the things that causes increased exposure to estrogen? What are all the things that that produces increased estrogen exposure will be the risk factor for developing carcinoma, like early menarche. When a female gets menarche at the earlier age, she is being exposed to, I mean her breast will be exposed to estrogen for more longer time. And late menopause, the same mechanism. As she is being exposed to the estrogen cycles for a longer time. And older age at the first live birth, I mean delayed birth and nulliparity. Because of nulliparity, she may be, she is being exposed to the estrogen. Because during pregnancy, estrogen level will decrease. And unmarried women also for the same reason. And his previous history of irradiation is more important. For example, chest irradiation for lymphomas at the at the younger age group. Because younger lymphoma is more common at the younger age group. For lymphoma, the females can might have undergone some radiation therapy, which can lead to CA breast. And the intake of hormone replacement therapy for any reason, and obesity, high fat diet, alcohol consumption. Alcohol consumption increases the serum estradiol level. This in turn will cause increased exposure to estrogen. Okay, and uh, it is more common among the Western countries, man. Afro-American women are higher risk for I don't know the reason for it. Afro-American women are the highest risk, and there are other most common things that heredity and familial characters because of genetic transmission. So I'll sum up the risk factors. The factors that causes increased exposure to estrogen are the main risk factors like early menarche, late menopause, old age of live birth, nulliparity, unmarried women, and previous radiation exposure, hormone replacement therapy, obesity, high fat diet, alcohol consumption, and heredity. So coming to the heredity, hereditary breast cancers. So most common type of inheritance of CA breast is autosomal dominant pattern. Okay, the most common pattern of inheritance of CA breast is autosomal dominant. The mutation will occur in the germline mutation. This is a germline mutation. It is not an autosomal mutation. So the two major genes that play important role in development of CA breast is BRCA1 and BRCA2. And other tumor suppressor genes are, you know about the tumor suppressor genes like P53. And the other genes can also play a major role, which you will see in later stages. The tumor suppressor gene, what is the role of tumor suppressor gene? It controls the cell cycle and repairs the DNA pathway. Okay, so any damage to the tumor suppressor gene will affect the cell cycle control and DNA damage repair pathway. This can lead to CA breast. Patients with this mutation of BRCA1 or BRCA2 can develop an CA breast at the early stage and they are more prone for developing bilateral cancer also. So you are seeing about the BRCA1 and 2, both are autosomal dominant inheritance. Usually the BRCA1 gene is located in chromosome 17Q while BRCA2 gene is located in chromosome 13Q. So risk factor is more in BRCA2. It is around 85 percentage while it is with 60 to 70 in BRCA1. And BRCA1, it always and mostly causes poorly differentiated invasive ductal carcinoma. But in case of BRCA2, there will be a well differentiated invasive ductal carcinoma. So well differentiated carcinoma is better for the removal than poorly differentiated. And usually BRCA2 will have hormone receptor positive while BRCA1 will have a triple negative tumor. The other carcinomas associated with BRCA1 are ovarian cancer, colon cancer, prostate cancer. So because of triple negativity here, if a patient is found to be found to have a BRCA1 mutation, prophylactic bilateral mastectomy is advised. In case of BRCA2 mutation, here too, 
the lifetime risk is around 85 percentage and it can also lead to GA malignancy and melanoma also though it is a hormone receptor positivity positive tumor our main aim should be to eliminate the disease so prophylactic bilateral mastectomy can be advised so in any hereditary disease hereditary confirmed mutation present in a in a female you should go for prophylactic bilateral mastectomy here we can everybody know about Elena Julia I suppose who underwent bilateral mastectomy she is a Hollywood actress she, uh, her uh, mother her uh, maternal uh, auntie everybody they had their uh, CA breast and died of CA breast she so she undergone some uh, genetic uh, test where she was found to have BRCA1 mutation and she went for prophylactic mastectomy so if you know about the difference between the BRCA1 and 2 both the autosomal dominant inheritance and the chromosome will be 17q in case of BRCA1 it will be 13q in case of BRCA2 and BRCA1 will probably lead to poorly differentiated invasive ductal carcinoma while BRCA2 will lead to well differentiated invasive ductal carcinoma and coming to the hormone receptors BRCA2 will have a positive positive hormone receptors while BRCA1 will have a triple negative triple negative tumor receptors which means that there will be no, no representation of estrogen, progesterone or HER2 receptors in BRCA1 mutation. A BRCA1 mutation will be associated with ovarian cancer, colon cancer and prostate in males. If BRCA1 mutation is present in males, it can lead to male breast cancer which is also present. Male breast can also have a cancer. So male breast cancer and prostate cancer are common in BRCA1 mutation in male and in case of females, sorry in case of BRCA2 2 mutation, GA malignancy and melanoma can occur. So other hormones as we told already, as we spoke about it already, there are some tumor suppressor genes that play an important role in controlling the cell cycle etc. and uh, the DNA damage control mechanism. If these gene mutation occurs they can also produce breast cancer the few syndromes that is associated with breast cancer are leaf from any syndrome here in leaf from any syndrome p53 gene mutation will be seen it is usually associated with soft tissue sarcoma breast cancer brain tumor adenocortical cancers and acute leukemia for example if a patient presents with a soft tissue sarcoma and a younger age patient we should look if the, the patient is diagnosed to have some p53 gene mutation on genetic studies we should look for ca breast we should screen for ca breast periodically and uh, other other cancer are also possible the next syndrome will be cowden syndrome this cowden syndrome will be due to p10 mutation p10 gene mutation here it is associated with breast carcinoma thyroid carcinoma squamous cell carcinoma and the endometrial carcinoma and hamartomas can occur and our third syndrome will be putz deha syndrome it is associated with stk11 gene mutation here it can lead to breast liver lung ovarian uterine cancers the three syndromes that is associated with tumor suppressor gene mutation are leaf from syndrome p53 gene mutation cowden syndrome p p10 gene mutation, putz jaga syndrome, STK11 gene mutation. So we have diagnosed the case of CA breast. So the patient will be asking whether he can be, he will be all right soon. So how to determine the prognostic thing, prognostic marker? There are certain things called as prognostic marker for a breast cancer. Presence of axillary lymph node, tumor size, histological grading, as we saw about that uh, grade 1 well differentiated, poorly differentiated, moderately differentiated and histological tumor type like medullary, serous, mucinous and the receptor status triple negative or estrogen positive receptors and age of the patient. These are the factors based on which we can <laughs> reassure the patient. These are the factors that determine the prognosis of the disease. So there is a entity called as Nottingham's prognostic index. This is to determine the prognosis of the patient. There are around four, five things, excellent, good prognosis, excellent prognosis, moderately, one moderate and poor prognosis. This is based on three, three things, that is axillary lymph nodes, 
grading of the tumor and the tumor size. Based on the Nottingham prognostic index, the 10 year survival rate of the patient will be determined. So everybody know about the, the prognostic, there are certain things called the prognostic factors, the factors that influence the prognosis of the disease. They are axillary lymph node, tumor size, histological grade, histological tumor type, and steroid receptor status and the age of the patient. I know about the Nottingham's, Nottingham's prognostic index, which determine, it is determined by three factors. They are axillary lymph node involvement, grading of tumor, and the size of the tumor. So coming to the clinical features, about 80% of CA breast is ductal arises from ductal epithelium and 10% from lobules and other 10% are special type of CA breast. So it is clear that 80% of CA breast dark arises from ductal epithelium, ductal carcinomas, while the 10% are lobule, I mean arises from lobules, while the other 10 are special types. It is mainly classified into two types, man, that is in situ and the invasive carcinoma, as previously we know about it. Usually the ductal carcinoma will be unilateral, and as I said already, lobular carcinoma is usually bilateral. So if the pathologist is giving a report of a lobular carcinoma, you should go for opposite breast examination. Preferably, you can advise even prophylactic mastectomy. So coming to symptomology, so the initial primary complaint will be lump. Lump in the breast will be the most common complaint. It may be painful or painless lump. Most commonly, it will be a painless lump because malignancy are usually painless. And coming to the nipple discharge, bloody discharge will be present usually. There may be a recent nipple retraction. Nipple retraction can be a benign or a malignant reason may be that. The nipple retraction present from the childhood, it may be benign lesion. It can be revived by suction using a syringe. But recent nipple retraction, history of recent nipple retraction is more important to suspect CA breast. And skin ulceration and nodules can be present, like Paget's nipples, Paget's disease of nipple. Skin ulceration or crusting over the nipple will will indicate the presence of some undermining lesion in this chest, in the breast. And the local local signs may be present. Another thing will be loss of weight, cancer cachexia. So here in this image, we can see about the lump breast. In the image in the left of your, in left of in the left side of your cell. There is an alteration in the contour of the breast. Even the size of the breast is altered. Okay. And in the right side, you can see the nipple retraction. Nipple retraction may be radial or segmental, man. Okay, there's more beyond the scope. Okay. So here you can see the nipple retraction clearly. In the left image, first image, I mean image A, there can it is it shows a change in the alter, alteration in the contour of the breast. Size of the breast is altered. Second will be the nipple retraction. And here you will be seeing about the skin ulceration in the second diagram. And in the left you can see about the satellite nodules. There may be some nodules may be present. These nodules may be due to lymph node enlargement. So coming to the metastasis, as already we, we read about it, it has a lymphatic spread, hematogenous spread is also there. So in case of lymphatic spread, it spreads to the axillary lymph node. So same side lymph node will be, same side axillary lymph node will be commonly affected. And the first lymph node that is affected or involved is called a sentinel lymph node. An opposite breast, opposite axillary lymph node can also be affected. This shows metastasis. And the other areas where it can metastasis are supraclavicular nodes and sometimes there may be abdomen mass. You know about Krukenberg's tumor. Here there will be an ovarian secondaries. There may be ovarian secondaries that spreads through the peritoneal lymphatics. The Krukenberg's tumor is due to the ovarian secondaries that spreads through subperitoneal lymphatics. Just below the peritoneum, we have some lymphatics. Through these lymphatics, the CA breast can spread to the through the to the ovaries. And patient can complain of lymph breathlessness. This may be due to the pleural effusion because of obstruction of pleural lymphatics, there may be collection of fluid in the pleural cavity and there may be some lymphedema in the arms. Because of axillary lymph node involvement, the lymphatics of arm can be obstructed and this can lead to 
limb, lymph edema of the limb. So this is all about the lymphatic spread and hematogenous spread can also occur. Hematogenous spread most commonly occurs to the, so we first will deal about the lymphatic spreads and this image shows the lymph edema and the A and B will show the lymph edema. This, this occurs due to the obstruction of the axillary lymphatics. So coming to the hematogenous spread, hematogenous spread commonly spreads to the order. The first involved will be the lumbar vertebra. This lumbar vertebra involvement, the patient will complain of lower back kick. Why this lumbar vertebra is first involved? This is because of because of the bad sense venous plexus. Bad sense venous plexus is the most common is the most common uh, venous channel that is responsible for metastasis metastasis of CA breast to the lumbar vertebra. The second involved region for metastasis will be femur. Third will be thoracic vertebra and fourth is ribs and skull. So first commonly involved region for hematogenous spread is lumbar vertebra, then femur, then thoracic vertebra, followed by ribs and skull. Why the lumbar vertebra is most commonly involved is that because of the bad sense venous plexus. Okay, next other symptoms will be hem hemoptysis. This may be due to the pulmonary parenchymal involvement. Only when the lung parenchyma is involved, patient complains of hemoptysis. Jaundice can be due to the liver metastasis and that may be even seizure, vomiting, blurring of vision when the brain parenchyma is increased. When the brain parenchyma is I mean, when the brain parenchyma is metastasis, metastasized, if the brain parenchyma is involved, there may be a tumor or nodule arising in the brain that can cause increased intracranial pressure. This increased intracranial pressure can lead to vomiting, blurring of vision and seizure depending upon the area of involvement in the brain. So coming to the signs, there will be a painless hard lump in the breast that can be mobile or immobile or fixed tumor. Then radial nipple retraction is commonly seen. This radial nipple retraction is due to the fibrosis of, fibrosis of the fibrous strands that holds the nipple and circumferential nipple retraction is commonly seen in congenital retraction. So to differentiate between the benign or malignant nipple retraction, if there is a uh, circumferential nipple retraction, it is usually congenital. When there is a radial nipple retraction, it may be due to malignancy. So there should be a history of recent nipple retraction. And the nipple discharge on compression of the lump, this may be due to the capillary capillaries in the tumor. The tumor will be very much vascular. Okay, it will it will, it will lead to some uh, production of many many blood vessels that uh, that feeds the tumor. There will be proliferation of blood vessels around the tumor that will feed the tumor. So on squeezing of the tumor, there will be a bloody discharge will be present. And skin tethering, this is commonly due to the infiltration of the Cooper's ligament. This can be demonstrated easily and pudy orange appearance is due to the obstruction of the dermal lymphatics. The dermal lymphatics also called as sapis plexus. Okay, these are the signs that can be seen. There will be painless mass, radial nipple retraction, nipple discharge, skin tethering and a pudy orange appearance. Skin tethering will be due to the involvement of infiltration of Cooper's suspensory ligament Beauty orange appearance is due to the involvement or obstruction of sapis plexus by tumor cells. So then axillary lymph node presence will also depict the important prognostic factor and the chest wall fixity. When the tumor is within the breast, it will be mobile. When the tumor invades the pectoral muscle or rib cage or any intercostal muscle, the tumor becomes fixed. Here you must understand one thing that chest wall does not include pectoralis major muscle. Okay, pectoralis major and minor will be will be considered as a breast, the component of breast. We will be telling it as a chest wall fixity is present only when the mass invades the rib cage and intercostal muscle. Understand? Chest wall fixity will be mentioned, will be considered only when the tumor infiltrates the rib cage or intercostal muscles. And the paraspinal tenderness will be there when the lumbar vertebral metastasis occurs. So this image shows the pudy orange appearance. 
in this pure or pure orange appearance is due to the obstruction of the dermal lymphatics called as sapis plexus by the tumor cells and you can see the chest wall fixity in the next image there is uh, two tumors depicted first tumor is confined within the breast while the second thing involves the intercostal muscles and is beyond the ribcage so this involves chest fixity so based on a gene expression that is the receptor exp expression there is a classification called as luminal classification here in luminal A there will be estrogen receptor and progesterone receptor HER2 new receptors in progesterone and estrogen will be positive while the HER2 will be negative in luminal B both all, all are positive three, three receptors will be positive in case of luminal B luminal A only estrogen and progesterone will be positive and HER2 will be negative in normal breast like tissues that will be well differentiated and ER will be positive and in HER2 type HER2 new receptors will only be positive while other two will be negative in case of basal cell that will be triple negative this is not much important but you must know that luminal criteria of the or luminal classification is based on the receptors in which we have five classification like luminal A, B, normal breast, basal type and HER2 type of these five types, luminal A will have the best prognosis where estrogen receptor and progesterone receptor will be positive and HER2 will be negative. While in HER2 type, only HER2 will be positive and other two are negative. The importance of these receptor, receptor study is will be more important in chemotherapy. In starting chemotherapy, these receptor studies are more important. So coming to TNM staging, so first we can see about the tumor, T1 means tumor size less than 2 cm inside the breast and uh, T2 2 to 5 cm and T3 is more than 5 cm while the T4 there will be a skin involvement or chest involvement. I don't think that it can be easily memorized, you have to memorize it, no other options are there. Everybody will be in the same situation right now because everybody have crossed the situation, all the major surgical oncologists have crossed the same situation as as you are now. So I have to read it. So tumor T1 means less than 2 cm, T2 means 2 to 5 cm, T3 means more than 5 cm and uh, T4 means involvement of skin and chest wall. Coming to the lymph nodes, N, no N0, no lymph node, N1 means ipsilateral mobile axillary lymph node. This will be also called a sentinel lymph node. Sentinel lymph node is the node where the tumor drains first. N2 will be ipsilateral fixed axillary lymph node. N1 is ipsilateral mobile. N2 is ipsilateral same side fixed. N3 will be other nodes like supraclavicular, infraclavicular, infraclavicular or opposite side, infra, internal mammary nodes, etc. And the M1, M0 means no nodes, I mean no metastasis and no metastasis present. Here staging of CA breast based on TNM classification. So the wheel of tumor characteristics. These are the things, uh, earlier we saw about the prognostic indicators. So the things which will determine the poor prognosis will, are lymph node metastasis, tumor size, cytologic and histologic classification and the DNA ploid, that is pleomorphism of nucleus and receptor status, proliferation index, KA67 factor and HER2 new receptors and mutation of tumor suppressor genes and epidermal growth factor and tumor type. This is based on the AGC classification. So, as, uh, so I mean, it is again recorrecting of the T staging. TIS means carcinoma in situ. T1 less than 2 cm. When the tumor is less than 2 cm, it is T1. T1 is further classified into T1A, T1B, and T1C. Where T1A means tumor size less than 0.5 cm. It is usually clinically not palpable. T1B means more than 0.5 but less than 1 centimeter, this will be a palpable tumor. T1C is more than 1 to, sorry, 1 to 2 centimeter. T2 will be 2 to 5 centimeter and T3 will be more than 5 centimeter. T4 means involvement of chest wall or skin. T4 is further classified as T4A and T4B. Here T4A means there is an involvement of chest wall. Chest wall includes ribcage intercostal muscles not the pectoralis group of muscles. T4B is involvement of skin like uh, ulceration, direct infiltration, pudi orange appearance and satellite nodules. T4C is both A and B which means that there is an involvement of chest wall and also the skin. 
coming to T4D is inflammatory carcinoma cancer, which is a poor prognosis. In this image shows the T1A, T1B, and T1C. There's less than 0.5 centimeter and 0.5 to 1 centimeter and 1 to 2 centimeter. Here we will see about T2 and T3, 2 to 5 centimeter and uh, more than 5 centimeter T3. T4A, here this involves the chest wall. T4B, it involves the skin. T4B, involvement of skin, you can see the PD orange appearance. It is my just a pictorial uh, diagrammatic representation of myself. T4C is both T4A and B. That is the involvement of chest wall and also skin. So coming to the lymph node metastasis, there are three levels of lymph node. This three levels of lymph node will be is, uh, is being classified in relationship to the axillary vein. Okay, just below the axillary vein, there will be level 1. And in the over the axillary vein, there will be a level 2. And above the axillary vein, it will be level 3 nodes. So as, as said already, Nx means lymph node, lymph node cannot be assessed. N0 means there is no lymph node metastasis. N1 means same side mobile nodes. N2 means same side but fixed nodes. N2 is further classified into N2A and N2B. N2A means level 1 and 2 lymph nodes are alone involved and they are fixed. N2B means involves all involves other uh, opposite lymph nodes also. N3. So N3 means other lymph nodes like uh, supraclavicular, intraclavicular, internal mammary, opposite side axillary nodes also. N3 is further classified into N3A, B, and C. N3A involves same side infraclavicular node, while N3B is same side internal mammary and axillary nodes. N3C is same side supraclavicular nodes. So N3A means infraclavicular, N3B means it involves internal mammary, and N3C means it involves supraclavicular lymph nodes. So here we can see about the N1. That is same side mobile nodes. N2, N2A, same side fixed node of level 1. Level 1 nodes, same side, and this fixed or mated. N2B means same side level 3 nodes are involved. This is N3A. N3A means infraclavicular, same side infraclavicular nodes are involved. N3B, same side internal mammary nodes are involved. N3C, same side, supraclavicular nodes are involved. So M staging, the M0 means no distant metastasis, M1 means distant metastasis present. And coming to the staging, stage 0, I think you have to memorize this all, have no other option. And probably this will be useful for uh, clinical presentation, not more than a theory to be useful in clinical presentation. These are the things which, involve, which comes under stage 0 and uh, stage 1 day we include these all things, tumor sizes, TNM, stage 1B involves these TNM stagings, stage 2A, 2B, 3A, 3B and C. So for this you have to understand that there are stage 0 to stage 4 are there based on the TNM staging. So coming to the uh, investigations, we have a triple assessment technique which includes histological and clinical examination first followed by a radiological investigation like ultrasound mammography and third will be the pathological investigation like FNAC core biopsy and op open biopsy. At present, ultrasound and mammogram or MRI can be taken. Usually mammogram is preferred in elderly people while the ultrasound and MRI will be I mean, ultrasound will be preferred in younger age group and MRI will be preferred in case in some cases. In whom the USD ultrasound is preferred are younger females because the density of the breast tissue will be more in these cases. So mammogram, you know, can, the sensitivity of mammogram will be very less in these cases. So we should go for ultrasound. In, younger, in older age group, the density of the breast will be decreasing. So mammogram, mammogram can be used. MRI of the breast can be used in conditions like previously operated cases to differentiate between the scar and the CA breast or in case of presence of processes. Some breast augmentation surgeries, people are doing some breast augmentation surgeries like cosmetic surgeries. So to differentiate between the processes and the CA breast, you should go for MRI. The other investigation like chest X-ray, ultrasound abdomen and PET scan to rule out metastasis and sentinel node biopsy, frozen section biopsy, etc. to be done. 
So here we can see the this shows a ultrasound ultrasound image. Acoustic shadows can be seen. So indication of breast ultrasound. Any woman less than 33 age with symptoms. Any woman less than 33 age with symptoms, and any pregnant or lactating woman, because X-ray X -ray, mammogram is just an X-ray, so it is contraindicated in case of pregnancy. And also, and the sensitivity and the specificity of ultrasound will be more than the top mammogram. So even if mammogram is negative, you can go for ultrasound. And breast inflammation, augmented breast, breast lump in males, and for biopsy, image guided biopsy. This shows the image of uh, mammographic, mammographic image. Here we can see some lesions in it. You can see the uh, arrow mark in the image. So this shows some classic calcification and the uh, alteration in the contour of the breast. So coming to the coming coming briefly about the mammogram, it is a specialized type of X-ray, and radiation used will be 0.1 gyre. ray. There will be two views in case of mammogram. That is anterior posterior view. That is called as uh, that is usually taken in our X-rays chest. Here we will be using two views: craniocardial view from upper to down, in superior to inferior, and medial to lateral view. So this is an important uh, five more question for you people. The difference between benign and malignant lesion in a mammogram. The benign lesion in a mammogram will have a smooth margin while the malignant lesion will have a stellate or speculated margin or comet tail appearance will be seen. Comet tail appearance is most common classical feature of malignancy in mammogram. And uh, depending upon the density, benign diseases benign will, be, will have a low density while the malignant diseases will have high density. And uh, there will be thin hollow in the benign diseases and a wide hollow in the malignant diseases. Coming to the calcification, in case of benign diseases, there will be a macro calcification. While in case of malignant diseases, there will be micro calcifications. And coming to the breast parenchyma, in case of benign diseases, breast parenchyma will be normal. While in case of malignancy, the contour of the breast, architecture of the breast will be altered. Skin of the breast will be normal in case of benign diseases, while the skin involvement can be seen in case of malignancy. Cooper's ligament will be involved or thickened, infiltrated in case of malignancy, and duct can duct can be involved. There will be duct obliteration or duct dilatation can also be there. Retro mammary space will be obliterated in case of malignancy because the malignancy can spread uh, can metastasize the chest wall, so this will obliterate the retro mammary space. So here you can see the mass calcification, architectural distortion, asymmetry, and skin or nipple changes can also be seen. So this is the this is how we will take the digital mammogram. We have two views like cord, craniocardial view, superior to inferior, and the medial lateral views. So Birats image imaging. That is what is meant by Birats? Breast imaging reporting and data system. So you should learn about it. Birats is is a is a will be the radiological interpretation. Okay, usually the radiologist will interpret and will they will give us a Birats one or two or three or four. So Birats six means it is a biopsy proven lesion. You already have proven it as a biopsy. Okay, Birats zero means there is no need of additional investigation. Birats one means it is negative or benign or negative. There is no lesion in the breast. Birats two means there is a benign disease. That's a benign disease. It needs routine scan screening is necessary. Birats 3 means it is probably benign. There should be a follow-up every six months. Follow-up ultrasound should be taken every six months in case of Birats 3. Birats 4 means it is a suspicious disease and we are supposed to go for tissue diagnosis. Birats 4 can be further classified into 4A, 4B and 4C based on the level of suspicion. If it is low suspicious disease, it will be Birats 4A moderate 4B and high suspicious it will be Birats 4C. And Birats 5 means it is highly suggestive of malignancy. The incidence of malignancy will be more than 95 percentage. And Birats 6 is it is a biopsy proven case. Just taking an ultrasound for a namesake, that is, that is it. So Birats classification is based on radiological imaging. Probably ultrasound, ultrasound is used. 
Here, zero means need some additional imaging. Other further modality can should be done. For example, like MRI breast can be done for these cases. Virat one is negative. Patient can be assured or reassured, and patient can be asked to leave the leave the hospital. Virat two means it is a benign disease where routine examination, routine screening is done, and the benign disease can be eliminated by surgical excision alone. And the Virat three is probably benign. Here we need a recurrent or a con continued follow up for at least six months. Virat four is suspicious where we should go for tissue diagnosis. Virat five is highly suspicious of malignancy. Virat six is biopsy proven disease. Here we can. This is an MRI image of CA breast. Here we can see the posterior extent, retromammary space. Everything is clearly seen that there is no involvement. So indication for MRI in CA breast. This can be even your short answer. The, here the MRI is used to, to differentiate the scar from the CA breast. It is also used to, to differentiate between the recurrence of CA breast. The reason I have augmented their breast using some implants or processes. It is also used in young patients where in young patients the density of the breast tissue will be high. So it is commonly used, MRI can be used in young patients. It can also be safely used in pregnancy. And uh, it is also used in high risk cases like uh, people with BRCA1 and 2 mutation who, who when uh, diagnosed at the younger ages can undergo MRI screening. It is also used in following the chemotherapy. Post chemotherapy, MRI can be taken to detect the response, response to the chemotherapy. In case of impalpable no lump with nodes, sometimes the patient can have present with the axillary lymph nodes, but there will be no palpable node in, in no palpable lump in the breast. In those cases, you should go for MRI. In some cases, patient may present with lump or axillary nodes, node enlargement, but there will be no palpable breast lump. In those cases, we can go for MRI. So coming to the histological assessment. These are all the fine procedures and done to detect the histological types. These are also the surgical procedures. These are the bedside procedures which are to be done to determine the treatment protocol of the disease. Because in case of CA breast, the treatment and management should be individualized. The treatment and management of the patient should be individualized based on the nature of the disease. So coming to the histological examination, which is a vital part of triple assessment, we can go for fine needle aspiration cytology, true cut or core needle biopsy. This true cut or core needle biopsy can be done under image guidance or like a mammogram, ultrasound, MRI even. So this image of the FNAC. FNAC itself can be a short answer, short question, short notes for you people. FNAC, here we will be using around 22 gauge needle. Several passes should be done. We should fix the mass. You can see the image that the, that the surgeon is fixing the mass with one hand and he is using the other hand for taking the sample. The thing is that FNAC cannot differentiate between invasive and the in situ carcinomas. There will be only cytological confirmation of the disease, whether it is a ductal or a lobular. But the FNAC cannot determine whether it is a invasive carcinoma, whether it has breached the membrane or not. So diagnostic accuracy of FNAC will be 80 percentage, while the suspicious lesion can be evaluated further by core needle biopsy. If the FNAC is inconclusive, then we should go for core needle biopsy or true cut biopsy. So advantages of core needle biopsy, it is a histological proof and the receptor analysis can be done. Most important point of point is that here the receptor analysis can be done. In core needle biopsy, the biopsy specimen can be used for analyzing the receptors, like hormone receptors. And it is most commonly used in case of inconclusive FNAC results. And the core needle biopsy is preferred before starting the neoadjuvant therapy because the new adjuvant therapy is based on the receptor status. FNAC is not useful in identifying the receptor status while the core needle biopsy is useful in identifying the receptor status.
So a disadvantage of core needle biopsy is that it was relatively painful than FNAC because the size of the needle will be more and the incision size will also be more. The site of biopsy it can lead to hemorrhage because any investigation or any imaging done after taking core needle biopsy will lead, will wrongly guide you because once the core needle biopsy is taken that may be collection of blood inside in, the re, in that region. So this can misdiagnose, this can lead you to the wrong diagnosis. So first, first primary thing to be done in CA breast is clinical examination followed by radiological examination then you should go for histological examination. This is the order to be done because core needle biopsy if taken first this can mislead you, it can misguide you in imaging. So this is the image of the core needle. So this is how the image care biopsy will be taken. In the first image you are just inserting it, second image you can see the needle, third image we are just seeing about the uh, mass where it is located. So it is very useful in taking the biopsy from the deep seated masses and, and impalpable masses. This is an image of a mammotome. It, it is based on the vacuum assisted biopsy. It is also called as vacuum assisted biopsy. So usually open biopsy is preferred. Okay. First, there are two types of open biopsy, excision biopsy and incision biopsy. Excision biopsy is preferred, preferred when the lesion is small in size. When the lesion is small in size, why should we go for an incision biopsy, man? Why should we go for FNAC? Why should we go for a coronal biopsy? Instead, we can remove the entire mass. It can even be a therapeutic, not just diagnostic. Excision biopsy is not just diagnostic. It can even, even be a therapeutic mass. But the, this is confirmed only after the pathological confirmation. Incision biopsy is preferred in case of larger lesions. So excision biopsy will, is, will lead to in removal of the lesion with a margin of 1 cm of normal tissue. Man, just for comparison purpose, the excision biopsy should be done then by removing the mass along with a 1 cm of normal tissue. And lumpectomy is also an excision biopsy where a removal of lesion without the margins. This is usually done for benign diseases. So other investigations like X-ray chest, CT chest, ultrasound abdomen, bone scan and PET can be done. X-ray chest are done to detect the pleural effusion, lung involvement and rib erosion. So here you can see uh, in the second image you can see about the pleural effusion. And uh, in the first image you can see some lung involvement, the pl fluffy homogeneous opacity seen across the lung parenchyma. So ultrasound abdomen is done to identify the liver involvement, free fluid and Krukenberg's tumor. Krukenberg's tumor as already known it is a ovarian metastasis through subperitoneal lymphatics and pleural effusion. CT chest, ultrasound can also be used to detect the pleural effusion man, in chest. CT chest, it is usually done in a doubtful lesion on X-ray chest. CT chest is done to detect a chest wall involvement, whether the retromammary space is involved or not. Okay, it is also used to detect the presence of lymph nodes where the intermental mammary lymph nodes and the lung involvement, liver metastasis can be detected by CT scan and also the vertebral metastasis. And the skeletal survey, the skeletal survey involves extra of the whole body from the skull to the toe, that is our phalanges, distal phalanges. Bone scan can also be done to detect the bone metastasis. Instead of doing all these things, you can go for a single test called PET scan. The entire body, whole body PET can be done to detect the metastasis and involvement. So what is the role of METS? It is used to detect the nodal disease. Okay, whether the lymph nodes can enlarge in any, any situation. As everybody know, it can involve, it can be involved or it can enlarge in case of any infection or inflammation and can also be due to the in malignancy. To detect the differentiate between the reactive nodes and non-reactive nodes, if you go for CT. And the sensitivity and specificity will be more in this case. And it is a single investigation to detect the whole body metastasis. So coming to the theories of metastasis. There are three theories of metastasis. There are Halstead theory, Fisher's theory, and the Halstead theory, Fisher's theory, and Hellman's theory. Here the Halstead theory, he says that it is a contagious spread. It is just a fantasy. It is not necessarily just a fantasy. He says that this is a contagious, a contagious spread that is spreads through lymphatics to the entire body and Fisher's cells say it is a systemic disease. Here, this is a systemic disease. It is not a localized disease. 
Elman says that it is a spectrum of disease where there will be primary and there will be metastasis. So coming to the treatment aspect, treatment is based on the diagnosis, histological diagnosis and radiological diagnosis. So coming to the ductal carcinoma in situ, your best conservation surgery with radiation therapy and hormone modulators can be given. Total mastectomy can also be done. Total mastectomy or breast conservation surgery either can be done. Breast conservation surgery is commonly advocated now for cosmetic purpose, but, but, uh, but the best conservation surgery should be followed by radiation therapy to eliminate the residual disease. So lobular carcinoma in situ, as already we said, prophylactic mastectomy should also be advocated. You have a repeated biopsy, repeat biopsy should be done to confirm the lobular carcinoma in situ because taking out one more breast is not a, that easy thing, it's really that easy thing. So to take a decision before, we should go for confirmation, repeated uh, biopsy can be done, repeat biopsy can also be done. And following the treatment aspect, following the prophylactic bilateral mastectomy, you can go for tamoxifen, estrogen receptor modifiers to reduce the risk of developing cancer. If the patient is not willing for prophylactic myelital mastectomy, we can go for tamoxifen. So coming to the early invasive breast carcinoma, this invasive breast carcinoma is further divided into early breast cancer and locally advanced breast cancer and metastatic breast cancer. The early breast cancer involves T1 and T2 lesion and N0 and N1, which means that when the tumor size is less than 5 cm and uh, only there is a same side, same side nodes are present. There is no metastasis. It is called as early breast cancer. The locally advanced breast cancer are T3 and T4, which means tumor size more than 5 cm and T4, it involves both chest wall and uh, skin fixity are present. N2 means, N2 and N3 means same side fixed node. It, it, it comes under locally advanced breast cancer and metastatic means any metastasis to other organs. Early breast cancer can be managed by breast conservation surgery or total mastectomy. So breast conservation surgery, it includes wide excision, segmentectomy, quadrantectomy, partial mastectomy. Here the main aim is that to achieve the tumor-free margin. After the excision of the mass, the excised specimen margin should be free of tumor cells. This should be followed by actually no dissection and breast conservation surgery should always be followed by radiotherapy. Preferably 4,500 4, to 5,000 gyri, curie gyri, 5 to 6 weeks, whole breast irradiation is done. So absolute contraindication for breast conservative surgery are prior radiotherapy to the breast. Radiotherapy during pregnancy, because in pregnancy, radiotherapy cannot be given. Breast conservation surgery is not complete without is not complete without giving radiotherapy. So in case of pregnancy, breast conservation surgery is impossible. An involvement of chest wall and the high suspicious of malignancy, the microcalcification and multicentric disease. Multicentric disease. Because when while we are removing the in case of breast conservative surgery, if you are removing one lump, in case of multicentric disease, the lung can develop in other areas also in the near, near future. So in case of multicentric disease, we should go for total mastectomy than a breast conservation surgery and positive pathological margin. When you are just in the operating table, you are going for a breast conservation surgery and you are removing the mass along. And by the side, you are doing a frozen section study, but the mass specimen you are taken out shows to, uh, shows to I mean, turns to be a, to have a positive, positive, tumor margin cells, tumor cells in the margins, positive for tumor cells in the margin, then you should go for total mastectomy than a conservative surgery. So relative mm -hmm. contraindication are multifocality and connective tissue diseases like scleroderma and lupus and the tumor size more than 5 cm where even if breast conservation surgery will have been done, there will be some changes in the contour of the breast. So coming this image shows the breast conservation surgery. Here the mass alone is removed. The entire mass alone is removed. <coughs> While the breast so this will be the image of the post op image of the breast conservative surgery. So management of axial lymph nodes. 
So complete axillary inferior dissection is the best goal standard thing. Okay. But now there is another concept called sentinel node biopsy. When is the sentinel node is being removed in early breast cancer. So complications of axillary dissection or axillary lymph node dissection are lymphedema, restricted shoulder movement, paresthesia or the medial aspect of the arm due to the nerve injury, an injury to the vital structures like neurovascular structures like axillary, lymph node, axillary vein etc. Thromboembolic phenomenon can also occur. So what is this? what is sentinel node biopsy? Sentinel node is nothing but it is a first node where the tumor drains. It is the first node where the tumor drains. Okay. This is done to avoid unnecessary dissection. Instead of removing all the axillary lymph nodes and creating some more complications like lymphedema, we can just remove the diseased lymph node. So how to identify the sentinel lymph node? There are two types. Okay. By using a fluorescent dye injection, we can identify the sentinel lymph node. Okay. And then image graded. So advantages of advantages of sentinel lymph node biopsy are the long term complication of axial lymph node biopsy is avoided. There will be faster recovery and there will be subst substantial specimen for more comprehensive analysis by the pathologist. So contraindications for sentinel node biopsy. The central node biopsy can be your five mark question man asked in short notes. So the contraindication for axillary lymph node biopsy or sorry sentinel lymph node biopsy or suspicious of clinically positive axillary lymph nodes and multifocal or multicentric disease and in case of pregnancy and lactation and in case of locally advanced diseases and previous breast surgery in the breast and axilla and preoperative chemotherapy or radiotherapy. So how to identify the sentinel node? By injecting the materials like technician 99M sulfur colloid and isosulfan blue dye. This dye can be injected. So the site of injection may be inside the tumor or in the breast parenchyma or in the dermal, dermal area. Derm, if, the, if there is a pudi orange appearance, just inject the dye over the pudi orange appearance intradermally so that the dye passes through the sappy plexus and it will be reaching the node where it drains. The first node that gets stained is called a sentinel node, the sentinel node. If you inject the dye into the tumor, the lymphatic from the tumor will reach the first node. That, is that first node that uh, drains the tumor is called a sentinel node. That is how we can identify the sentinel node. This image shows the sentinel node biopsy. This is how the sentinel node biopsy can be done. This is an intraoperative, uh, fi intraoperative finding of a sentinel node. So intraoperative detection of malignancy in sentinel, sentinel node. If I take a sentinel node, what will be done? You should go for frozen section analysis or touch imprint cytology or molecular methods can be done like mammoglobin cytokeratin study can be done. So post-operative RT after breast conservation surgery. So breast conservation surgery is not complete without any radiation. Okay, radiotherapy is must, okay. Recent techniques on multi-catheter insertion of medical therapy. And uh, these are all the types of radiotherapy that is commonly used. Instead of entire irradiation of breast, you can go for localized brachytherapy, balloon catheter brachytherapy, or even intraoperative radiotherapy can also be given. This image shows the brachytherapy where the catheters are inserted inside the breast and the radiation is applied to that localized area. So coming to the locally advanced CA breast. The breast conservation surgery is completely, completely it is within the is within the uh, within the scope of early breast cancer. Coming to the locally advanced CA breast, the criteria of our locally advanced CA breast is skin involvement, or a fixed or matted node, insulated supraclavicular internal mammary nodes, and chest wall involvement, arm edema, and distant metastasis. These are the criteria to call a CA breast as a locally advanced. Here, new adjuvant chemotherapy is the treatment of choice. Prior to the surgery, prior to the surgery, we should go for new adjuvant chemotherapy to downstage the disease, which means reducing the size of the disease and biological aggressiveness of the disease, and followed by surgery after three weeks of completion of chemotherapy, and also and then go for post-surgery chemotherapy. The locally advanced CA breast should be treated in the three steps. First, we should go for 
new adjuvant chemotherapy followed by surgery followed by post surgical chemotherapy okay the new adjuvant chemotherapy prior to surgery is given to achieve reduction in size of the primary tumor and to reduce the biological aggressiveness these chemotherapy drugs should be individualized based on the hormone receptor status of the biopsy taken so that is the er pr and her2 status is mandatory before chemotherapy and already we know about that uh, luminal classification luminal a has the better prognosis while the her2 rich has the poor prognosis is again the same thing so based on the response this can be your five mark question based on the response to the new adjuvant chemotherapy the tumor and the patient can be classified as four four types complete responder partial responder non responder and progressive disease so based on the response this response to the new adjuvant chemotherapy is assessed by mri breast the response to the new adjuvant chemotherapy is assessed by the mri breast you have the complete responder partial responder non responder progressive diseases these are the types we are classifying them based on the response so the surgery for the I mean, surgical treatment for simple mastectomy a total mastectomy can be done here the total mastectomy means removal of entire breast tissue along with the nipple areola complex and the skin the next entity is extended simple mastectomy where simple mastectomy with removal of level level 1 nodes are done and modified radical mastectomy here yeah, the removal of entire breast nipple areola complex skin and level 1 and 2 nodes are removed halted radical mastectomy here level 1 2 3 and all nodes are removed along with petrolus major and minor extended radical mastectomy means radical mastectomy with removal of internal mammary nodes super radical mastectomy means here the mediastinal and supraclavicular nodes also removed these are the various types of mastectomy this is to be individualized based on the patient's condition okay total mastectomy means only involve the only the removal of breast tissue nipple complex and skin while the extended means it involves removal of level 1 lymph nodes while the mrm means level 1 and 2 are also removed halstead means here the pectus major and minor removed along with level 3 nodes and extended means it involves internal mammary while the super radical means mediastinal and supraclavicular nodes are also removed so coming to the mrm mrm itself is a, it can be on short notes for you here the total mastectomy is done along with level 1 and level 2 axial lymph node dissection here the ideal incision is transverse elliptical incision modified, modified stewards incision but the incision should be individualized based on the location of the tumor the skin incision should be 2.5 cm wide of the tumor okay the flap raising this is more important thing it can be even a short answer in case of MRM the flap should be raised superiorly up to the clavicle and inferiorly up to the sixth costal rib medially up to the lateral border of the sternum laterally up to the lateral border of the latissimus dorsi nipple area complex should be always excised and entire breast tissue should be removed here this image shows the intraoperative image of total mastectomy where you can see the pectoralis major muscles here you can see the this is the image of axillary dissection where you can see the axillary vein angular vein etc types of mrm this is patty's modified radical mastectomy patty's canlons and achin clause this is based on the based on what we do to the pectoralis minor intraoperatively if the pectoralis minor is removed it is patty's if the pectoralis minor is divided but not removed it is canlon if the pectoralis minor is retracted but not divided it is achin clause we are going for achin clause modified radical mastectomy in our words here we usually practice acting close we will just retract the pectus minor muscle this why we should retract the pectus minor muscle is to see the axillary lymph nodes for doing axillary lymph node mean uh, for complete modi uh, modified radical mastectomy lymph nodes should be removed one and two to access this lymph, lymph nodes we should go for we should retract the pectus minor muscle removal of pectus minus minor muscle means it is practice modified radical mastectomy if the pectus minor is divided and not removed, the scan lawns, and if it is retracted, it is actually closed. So structures that are preserved in MRM, this can be a short answer. 
structures that are preserved in MRM or axillary vein, Bell's nerve, cephalic vein, and thoracodorsal bundle. So complications of mastectomy or serum of formation, flap necrosis, wound infection, lymphedema, and injury to the long thoracic nerve, and the injury to thoracodorsal nerve, and redundant axillary fat pad. These are the complications of mastectomy. So coming to the reconstruction, this uh, role of surgeon does not end just with the completion of surgery alone. Removal of uh, injured parts alone not a thing. Rehabilitation is more important. So we are going for reconstruction even. There are two types of reconstruction, one, immediate and delayed. Or you can go for even skin sparing mastectomy or using artificial processes or plastic procedures can be done. Immediate and delayed, it is based on the patient convenience, okay, based on the cost effectiveness. Okay, this is not this is not entirely for the patient treatment aspect. Delayed means you can go for some uh, muscle flap flap treatment flap treatments. Reconstructions can be done. So types of flap that is used for breast reconstruction are latissimus dorsi flap. Here this flap is based on thoracodorsal artery and tram flap. This is based on deep inferior epigastric artery and microvascular flap can also be done like free radial forearm flap. These flaps are used to maintain the contour of the breast. For nipple areolar complex, to you can go for tattooing or perianal skin can be done. So this image shows the tram flap. This is this is how we will uh, decide the tram flap appearance. I mean tram flap uh, repositioning. This is how the flap will be taken along with the inferior epigastric artery and it will be folded back and uh, the contour of the breast will be maintained. This is for latissimus dorsi flap. This image shows the first above image shows the post-operative image, post-operative bilateral mastectomy case, and the below image shows the how we will be going for latissimal dorsi flap. So skin sparing mastectomy. The indication will be it is a it will be less than five centimeter, and ductal carcinoma in situ can be in situ, and the contraindication for skin sparing disease will be inflammatory breast disease and involvement of skin. So this is a skin sparing mastectomy. Here yeah, the nipple areolar complex and the lesion will alone be taken while the, while the other skin will be preserved and uh, the contour of the breast can be maintained by implant, implanting some processes. So this are, this are something uh, extra points for you people man. How to maintain the cosmetic appearance like volume displacement and volume replacement man. Volume displacement means rotational flaps. We can remove. We can have a. We can take some muscle and rotate it and keep it over the chest region to maintain the size of the breast. Volume replacement means we can go for some local flaps. So radiotherapy after MRM. Okay, this is usually indicated for T3 disease and stage 3 disease. Man. And in case where the where the biopsy reports comes, the tumor margins are not free of tumor cells. If the tumor margins is is infiltrated by tumor cell, you should go for radiotherapy postoperatively. So what are the complications of radiotherapy? They are lymphedema, brachial plexopathy, radiation pneumonitis, refracture, and toxic cardiac toxicity and radiation induced secondaries, secondary, second primary. Radiotherapy can itself induce a malignancy. So systemic therapy involves chemotherapy and endocrine therapy. Chemotherapy here it is preferred for all premenopausal women and uh, patient with uh, ERPR receptor negativity, node positive patients, and any tumor more than one centimeter high grade tumor and high risk patients. Commonly used regimens are CMF regimen, SAF regimen, Daxols and carboplatins can be used. Now the latest regimen is 4 cycles of AC followed by 4 cycles of Taxol. These are all chemotherapy drugs, Taxols. So dosage will be cyclophosphamide, as I mean, you can read about the dosages man, no, nothing important than cyclophosphamide, doxorubicin, 5 fluoro Doxitaxel, plaxitoxel is commonly used, usually given, given once in 21 days. So side effects that is to be remembered is when you are going for a cyclophosphamide, we should we should think about the hemorrhagic cystitis, which will be the side effect of cyclophosphamide, which can be treated by giving mesna. The doxorubicin can go for alopexia and the cardiotoxicity. Alopexia, hair loss and cardiotoxicity can be due to doxorubicin. High fluorouracil can go for mucositis. This can be treated by leucoverin. Taxol can go for bone marrow suppression. Coming to the endocrine therapies, it is also an important part of important part of systemic therapy. Uh, ovarian suppression should be done. 
because estrogen it's a estrogen excess i mean excess uh, presence of estrogen is the cause for ca breast so in case of premenopausal women ovarian suppression can be done this can be done by selective estrogen receptor modifiers like tamoxifen or tamoxifen so estrogen suppression is the main aim this can be done by selective estrogen receptor modifiers like tamoxifen and the aromatous inhibitors in case of postmenopausal women letrozole anti estrogens like fluvestrant and progestins can be done can be given so endocrine therapy ideal endocrine therapy for premenopausal women will be tamoxifen and for postmenopausal women tamoxifen along with letrozole can be given so side effects of tamoxifen before prescribing any drug we should know about its side effect now, fluid retention nausea vomiting hot flashes endometrial carcinoma and thromboembolism and cataract are the side effects of tamoxifen well hot flashes and osteoporosis are the side effects of aromatase inhibitors so secondary endocrine therapy so if the patient is not i uh, mean uh, the complaints of patient will be poor in this cases then we can go for oophorectomy in premenopausal women to reduce the estrogen exposure in case of post menopausal women you can go for adrenectomy and hypophysectomy so in case of her two positive patients you can go for some monoclonal antibodies like stratosumab and lapatinib so coming to the most important topic it is a, can also be asked as a short answer inflammatory breast cancer here the dermal lymphatics within the tumor will be in, involved it is a painful condition all the malignancy will be a painless situation most of the sorry or not all most of the malignancy will be a painful situation the malignancy will become painful when it is uh, when it is in when it infiltrates the nerves or when it is superadded to infection but the inflammatory carcinoma breast is a painful condition it is a rapidly progressive tender foam lesion here yeah, the skin will be warm thick and brandy induration will be present with pure orange appearance mass may or may not be present here yeah, the mass may present or may not be present but there will be a changes of changes similar to the inflammation in the breast almost all the lymph nodes lymph node will be involved approximately one third have distinct metastasis also present so this image shows the image of the inflammatory carcinoma of breast here the mass can mass may be present or may not be present it is the most aggressive form of ca breast diffuse involvement involvement of the whole breast can be seen and the signs of inflammation may be present or may not be present and it is usually associated with erythema and the pudy orange appearance and commonly encountered during the pregnancy and lactation this inflammatory carcinoma is common during the pregnancy and lactation it will have the worst prognosis and the high mitotic index that is k67 factor this is another other condition luminal classification we have read about uh, read about the triple negative breast cancer it is it is more commonly associated with brca1 and 2 mutation and basal type here the treatment will be mastectomy with chemotherapy and with radiotherapy in case of triple negative there is a high recurrence after treatment after treatment so prophylactic mastectomy on opposite side should also be done in case of triple negative it is more commonly associated with brca1 and brca2 mutation and it is more common in premenopausal women here we should go for mastectomy with chemotherapy and radiotherapy so here we are completing our session of ca breast hope i have given a brief idea about ca breast if any doubts if people can uh, call me at any time or you can message me you can get my number through this through our tnmsc people and you can message me or you can call me at any time man and tomorrow we will be have a session on a clinical examination of ca breast and the person will be presenting a person. case and we'll have a discussion on that so this will be useful hope you uh, hope i think uh, i have given some just a button so uh, thrown some light over the ca breast keep reading start reading and uh, whatever you are reading now will be useful in your future it will be easy for you to take your uh, pg seats so in final year just complete your final year subject so that uh, in internship period you can go through your pre final year subject and paramedical subjects and easily rock your pg exams in the first attempt itself so thank you guys sir hello sir